cops have read it. What's the most bullshit sounding excuse you got that actually turned out to be true? Cop here. Got a call of a domestic dispute. That sounded very heated. And a lot of banging was heard. Get to scene and I can hear someone yelling and swearing and brawling. Doesn't sound good at all. Guy answers the door. Shirt off and angry. But seems bewildered as to why police had been called. He told me he was building IQ furniture. Sounds like the most bullshit thing. But, we enter, see the new Ikea furniture half set up and no one else is home. Color me surprised. Edit, thanks for the silver and gold. To answer a few people, no I did not help assemble the furniture. No one should assemble Ikea stuff while armed. During a search of a person I pulled out a bag of a sticky dark substance consistent with heroin. The subject had multiple drug priors and is a known heavy heroin user. He immediately tells me it is burnt sugar, and he is pissed someone sold it to him. Long story short, when I tested the substance it did not test positive for heroin. This explains the guy with the high blood glucose levels, when he showed up for court. I'm running booking one night, guy gets brought in for possessing a truly stupendous amount of drugs. Im talking like two rubbermaid toads full of shrooms, a huge bag of weed, and enough heroin to overdose half the county. Well, says he, I'm a de informant, and they told me to make the drop, so they could be there, and raid the crap out of everybody, and let me go for helping. A uh, hurry I I I I Face left please. Guy is like I'm telling you dude, they're gonna be so super pissed, that you country retards fucked up by a bust. Whatever, get in the holding cell and shut up. About 3 hours later 3 guys show up, the agents, they're super pissed, that our deputies fucked up by a bust. I go back to the holding cell to let the guy out, and he's just like they're super pissed huh? Yeah. Told you so. Former Merichur see here, look it up it is a Dutch thing, police but also military. We also had jurisdiction over the American soldiers stationed here. One day we got called over to a possible case of domestic violence. We arrive at the house and the guy opened wearing only underwear. He told us he and his wife were all a playing. Of course we didn't trust this and asked to see his wife. After denying us entry we told we would come back with a warrant. He reluctantly agreed to let us enter. So we go in and he opened the basement door and inside was the freakiest sex dungeon. I mean chains, whips things I couldn't identify hanging on the wall. And in the middle hanging in chains was his but naked, gagged wife. We asked her, but she told everything was okay. Turned out they were really into some kinky stuff. Asked them to keep the screaming part in the basement, and to a minimal. We did the whole thing with a straight face, but as soon as we were in the car. No cops are posting in here anyway, so I'll throw my hat into the ring as a defense attorney. Guy pulled over for impaired driving and charged later with Aoi. My boss gets the criminal complaint and the guy shows up for his initial appearance and tells her he hadn't been drinking despite horrifically failing the sobriety test. She's literally sitting next to him and he's obviously wasted again, disappointing but not uncommon for alcoholics. The deputies arrest him for bail jumping because he drove himself to court that day and while out on bail he's not supposed to drink. He adamantly denies drinking. Blood tests come back. He didn't drink. Dude's diabetic without knowing it, and naturally got himself drunk, because sometimes when it goes untreated, diabetes can cause symptoms that look just like intoxication. Got him some insulin and the charges dismissed. Edit, since there are so many people with the same questions. As far as I'm aware, the guy did the field sobriety test and failed. The last part of the test is the breathalyzer which he refused. Refusal is an automatic failure in and of itself without failing the nystagmus, follow the finger, walk, leg lift, and count. He didn't know he had diabetes. I already stated it in the original comment but yeah, Duke developed diabetes at some point and wasn't aware he had it until the case. Owie in Wisconsin is what DUI is in other parts of the US. Your first owie is not a criminal offense, it's just a ticket in Wisconsin, so it would have been at least this guy's second drunk driving accusation, but seeing as diabetes wasn't raised as a defense the first time, my assumption is he probably developed it after. 
I was driving with my fiancé, and we went through a roadblock where they checked registration and shit, and we get to the cops and they ask for our registration. I'm sitting in the passenger seat, so I open up the glove box and right there is a clear, unmarked baggie filled to the brim with catnip. I completely forgot it was there and just froze. Why died? I turned to look at the cop shining his light through my open window and he's frozen too. Just staring at the baggie with this look on his face like really? I just started immediately professing OMG I swear to god this is catnip. You can take it and smell it or test it or whatever like I swear. And at this point it's just so ridiculous that I start cracking up and the cop takes it and reasonably deduces I'm telling the truth. And he starts laughing and calls his partner over and tells her what happened and they both just cackled away for a minute and sent us on our way. Mid-July in like 2008. Young kid going 93 in a 55. I swing and he immediately pulls over. Approaching the car, his first words, before I can even start speaking, my dog died, he hung himself. I gotta get back before my mom gets home. Anyway, he calls other family members, his aunt, uncle and two cousins come out to the stop, and between all their sobbing, they verify that the dog had actually hopped over the fence on a leash slash runner, and couldn't get back over. Everyone's crying now. They showed me a photo on their phone. Apparently they found the dog, and called the kid at work and he just left. I didn't even bother verifying further than that. Cousin drove the kid's car back. So they could take care of the dog and prepare for mom. Some said that I should have wrote him, but losing an animal sucks enough. He knew he fucked up and adding financial burden to him wasn't going to help him or me. I got pulled over for driving to school at 10am. The cop wanted to know why I was skipping school. I explained that a little town's girls basketball team just won state, and since the game was so far away they let us start that day at 10.30am. He followed me all the way to the school, so he could ask the principal. I still don't know what was illegal about driving to school at 10am, but he was kind of a douche. Okay so I'm going to tell my crazy story as the person on behind the wheel. My uncle was divorcing his terrible wife. He was no saint, but definitely on the right side of their divorce. The wife was still on the paperwork to take their two kids out of the school, even though my uncle had temporary custody, while the courts did their thing. She had previously threatened to take them both, and just run away, so I don't know why she was still on the paperwork. On picture day that year, she showed up to the school, and signed both kids out and disappeared. I was not involved in the crazy process of calling the police and tracking the kids down, but I was pulled from school that day because I had my driver's license and could be an extra pair of hands. They managed to find the kids and they were turned over my grandmother and mom, but my niece was distraught that she would be missing picture day. It was her first time away from her terrible mother and she was finally allowed to be a cheerleader, a dream in her tiny eyes. So, me having my car and nothing else better to do, offered to take her back to the school. My mom got the school to agree to keep the person there a little longer, but it was going to be by the skin of our teeth that we would make it as this was rural okay. We got in the car and I blasted down those dirt roads doing approximate 70 and a 35. Not a good decision on my part, but I was an anxiety ridden 17 year old dealing with a nasty divorce and kidnapping for the first time in my life. We, of course, get pulled over. I'm freaking out cause I can't afford that bad of ticket and all the crap that was coming in that day. The cop listened to the story and ignored my barely held in tears and said he would let us off with a warning because he believed the story. And the only reason he believed the story was that he had just pulled over my uncle going the same speed the opposite direction on the same road and go the same story. Edit, my cousin, not my niece. She has that sound in her name and I always get it wrong. And I have not idea if my uncle got a ticket as I was too self-absorbed at 17 to consider asking him. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Let us know your thoughts on this topic. See you soon.